When I was 13 years old, I had about 16 casts on my body, and um, I was actually misdiagnosed for fractures. They were actually bleeds instead. I went to my HTC and the doctor looked at my x-rays and he noticed that none of them were fractures or breaks, that I'd actually have been treated wrong the entire last 13 years of my life. Because of him, I was able to actually get treatment and have a plan and order my medication and be able to advocate for myself. When it comes to this, this particular disorder and care for your child, uh, you want what's best for your child. And I know without a doubt that Dr. T and his staff are the best treatment for my child, and that's the bottom line. Guys that come to a hemophilia treatment center, a center of excellence for their hemophilia care, have a substantially lower mortality. Um, so I've often thought, well, why is that the case? And I think it's, it, it, it all goes back to that uh, integrated care approach. Uh, the, the person with hemophilia is not just a bystander, that person throughout his life becomes educated, becomes his own expert in hemophilia, which is why we have you know, experts of different kinds, not just medical experts on our team. You know, our behavioral experts, our social work experts, you know, really take um, a front and center role in you know, our approach to helping our guys transition through the different phases of life. An orthopedist, a physical therapist, or someone in a regular private practice might see one or two hemophilia patients in their entire career. So bringing those sorts of people together in one place to learn about hemophilia and apply that expertise really matters in terms of getting things right the first time so that the patients really have a good experience, but also so that they don't have unnecessary costs, the cost of surgeries, uh, cost of hospitalizations, or the cost of repeated emergency department visits. So that model really follows the patient-centered medical home model that we're trying to create in the internal medicine and in other areas. So Hemophilic Treatment Center kind of created that model many years ago and probably was never really appreciated of how much it was needed for these complex patients. The more complex a patient is, meaning it doesn't just need a physician or a nurse, but there's so many other caregivers needed to really make their, their entire stay go well from from inpatient to outpatient to ambulatory to, to having a normal lifestyle. It, it's very important that there's a lot more integration of the individuals talking, but also for payers to understand how they're managing those dollars, because that for a, a healthcare purchaser is really what they want to see. The, the goal is to prevent bleeds to the greatest extent possible. Failing that, the goal is to control the bleeds as quickly as possible. Um, and then to support the patient and family with all their other needs associated with that disease condition. And I think really the, uh, the proactive, comprehensive approach, making sure that the patient has access to the, the, the products that they need and the care that they need, making sure that the patients are appropriately educated, um, being kind of that backbone to coordinate all of the other care elements associated with that patient and their family, uh, it just does produce much higher quality outcomes and whenever you have higher quality, almost invariably your costs are better as well. There's quite a diversity in how persons with hemophilia are treated, and I can tell you that those patients who are not treated at hemophilia treatment centers have far worse outcomes. You know, they'll find adult uh, hemophilia patients who um, are, in their, are in their early 20s that even now in this day and age have terrible joint disease, are wheelchair bound, and when you know their past history comes out, it turns out they were not in the hemophilia treatment center. They didn't know that one existed. As I come across you know, younger kids in our community, I always encourage them to you know go to the HTCs and, and follow the, the treatment plan that their doctors are prescribing to them because um, I can easily just show them. I can show them I can't straighten my arms. Um, I can tell them about the pain that I have every day. Um, and that was because I didn't have access to an HTC when I was younger, and I didn't have access to the medication that they have access to today in, in prophylactic treatment. Because hemophilia is a lifelong disorder, I think that medical professionals in our HTCs build relationships with their patients and the families. 
and um, they take a special interest and you know they come to our chapter events and they visit with families and they care. That's what makes it work is that uh, you're in contact with your nurse, your social worker, your PT, not just at the annual visit, but throughout the year. You're, you know, when I, to this day, when I have an unusual bleed, I am emailing the treatment center. Young guys growing up with hemophilia today don't know what, um, how devastating hemophilia can be, uh, and we really risk regression uh, because just one or two bleeds can make a huge difference. So the, the care model that hemophilia treatment centers provide uh, actually ties it all together. It's the educational component, it's the optimization of scarce resources, uh, it allows uh, us to maximize uh, limited healthcare dollars, uh, and it ensures that uh, all of the aspects of care are managed, not just the medicine. Uh, treatment is, is far more than clotting factor concentrates.